Hey, 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 hey. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Rixty Minutes. I'm the best guy ever, and this is Digibro. Hey, I don't give a fuck, bitch. What's this, episode nine? This is episode nine of season three. That's right, my dude. Awesome. Uh, the ABCs of Beth. The ABCs of yes. Beth. This is our first. Man, this is a, this is a game changer. And in some ways, this is a game changer I, here. This is probably one of my favorite episodes of the show. I thought you might go that way. That's interesting. Yeah. That's interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, Because this was probably, like, the biggest, like, core plot development we've gotten in, like, outside of, like, the Council of Rakes and all the sci-fi stuff. Like, right. for the home life, mm -hmm. this is the biggest development we've gotten since the fucking, since the, uh, the first TV episode. Absolutely you know? correct. You know what's interesting? Uh, I think I'll probably have a slightly different interpretation of that, about that same exact idea. But why don't you tell us about it, did you? What went down? Well, basically, we learn about Beth's past mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. like, exactly who she is, which is something I think this show... I don't know if it's ever done a really great job of characterizing Beth. I couldn't like, agree more. Could not agree more. Like, I've always liked her, but she's always been kind of in the background... Um, mm -hmm. you know, like the, the main focus has always been her relationship with Jerry and sort of like how that changed her. But like, this is the first time we learned like exactly what she would be without Jerry. Yeah. Like, yeah. or, or who she was before that, you the, know? You know, the um, thing about Beth is that while Beth was like a better person, like a more interesting person than Jerry, her entire character arc like depended upon Jerry, and Jerry is yeah. the worst. So in what way could we possibly like care about Beth, considering like yeah. that's the crux of her character? There was just no way. There was just no way. And that was a problem I was feeling throughout this season, which is mm -hmm. that with them finally having broken up, Beth has not had much to do. Like, no she's just it. kind of been on this downward spiral of being, like, weird. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, that's mostly, like, most of the times we cut to her, she's just being <laughs> fucking weird. Um, yeah. But then in this episode, we get context into that weirdness that, like, maybe she's just always been a fucking weirdo. Yep. You know? Like, maybe maybe dating Jerry was just, like, a way of putting on a facade of normalcy in her life. I feel like they were building to this episode with this season so far. Yeah. I think that was that was inevitable. And, uh, yeah, I, I think if we were to sort of figure out why, in terms of her characterization, why this is, yeah, I would say it's because Jerry's gone. She no longer feels this need to, I don't know, be a placated mom kind of dude, I guess. Mm -hmm. Something like that. I, I honestly feel like that's giving it maybe a little bit more credit than it deserves. But, nonetheless, I, I certainly enjoyed what we've what we've seen transpose trans fucking happened this episode. That's the word I meant to say. Yeah. Happen. <laughs> Transpire. Transpire. That's the word I was looking for. Thank you. So Fuck. yeah, this this is an episode about um, really. It's a what was the B plot? Right, Jerry. Trying Jerry and to the the fuck fuck th three this titty bitch, girl, yeah. which was hilarious. He was fucking but, uh, her. He was fucking her. He knew she had yeah. two vaginas. That's cool. That's cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I I like th that was a great subplot, but obviously the less um, relevant yeah. half of the episode. Of course. <laughs> so basically, we learn this this interesting back and forth that Rick was in many ways a terrible father, mm -hmm. but um, also because he like I guess from a young age he had already corrupted Beth to be just as bad. Um, that yeah. Or she just naturally is. She's pretty she as he put it you were a scary fucking kid mm -hmm, um mm -hmm. and everything she ever wanted from him was stuff to make people like her but uh, hmm. it's very apparent that the reason she had those issues was like out of abandonment issues over her father but like to this extreme degree that is clearly like something's wrong with her no doubt you know no doubt like it's not just the daddy issues those are like just the catalyst for releasing what is already um psychopathy uh yeah, yeah. it kind of seems that way though i i kind of want to give her a break on that a little bit because i really do feel like i don't know i i really do want to attach it to well okay you know what i don't want to give her that much of a break but i really want to come down on rick for just being clearly the worst because all the things that he when he, he goes through they go through like this not montage but he just pulls out from this toolbox all the things he had made for her, all these like crazy goofy devices that like a child might want uh, and yeah. then they get, like, darker, just, like, a sentient switchblade. Like, okay, that's kind of weird. Yeah. Why would you want that? But, um, like, 
th those are things I could really see most kids asking for. But the thing is, parents know better than to give their children them. And they know, right. no, that, that's when you have to be a parent to tell them no. And, like, I almost want to blame it fucking all on Rick. I don't really know yeah. how responsible uh, I mean, that this You is. have to say it's all his fault because he's the fucking parent. She was a kid. It, yeah. You know? Yeah. yeah like, and obviously he was just placating her because, like, I can easily imagine mm -hmm. that Rick, in the brief moments he was around his daughter, mm -hmm. um, she would ask him for something and he would churn it out in a couple of seconds, hand it to her and fuck off. Right. And be like, this is enough, you know, mm -hmm. which is why he creates an entire other universe for her, which she grows up to believe is like, was just in her imagination. Yeah. Um, that was good. And he creates a whole <laughs> world for her to enjoy. And like, it's really, I really love the scene of Rick, like going through this world and like explaining about how like carefully he constructed it to be perfect for her. That was one of the that, best like, scenes in the episode. I loved it. Yeah, that it's just such a weird like obviously he's at fault here. Obviously this is all a bad idea and Beth is right, but he really did try his hardest. Like he did the best that Rick could as a broken <laughs> terrible man yep. to make a perfect place for his daughter. But just the you know? the attention to detail. I mean, like uh, yeah. I that is something that I absolutely would have noticed that like, well, okay, dude. So okay, you made the ground squ squishy great, but there's a river right there. She could easily drown. But yeah. no. It's fucking breathable water. It's not a problem. He 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 thought of yeah. all like the the reasonable things. And the only problem is that you know like a kid lived there for a million years and fucked the whole place right. up. So well, the the biggest problem is that the entire conceit is wrong. Well, yeah, you know? <laughs> it's like, no way to deal with your it, children problems. It's like if somebody like didn't wait. I'm trying to think of a good analogy here. Like if you mm -hmm. wanted to build a better toilet. And instead, <laughs> you built, like, the greatest sink in the universe. Like, it doesn't help the problem that you need to shit, you know? <laughs> I get, yeah, like, I suppose. That's, that's kind of what he's done here. It's like, the problem is that she needs her dad, oh, not right. that she mm -hmm. needs this. It doesn't matter how perfect you made it. It doesn't matter that you were the most considerate, considerate person in the world about how you designed this place. Mm -hmm. It was the wrong thing to make in the first <laughs> place. Very know? true, very true. And that's sort of the argument between them, and I thought that was really great. Yeah, Rick. Uh, Rick should take some more responsibility, I think. But on the other hand, uh, so basically, all their grievances from are like from when she was a kid. These days, she's a pretty together person for the most part, until she has some of these moments later on where she yeah. really she lets the facade fall away and uh, she embraces right. her monster mode, which I enjoy. I mean, <laughs> which I, enjoy. I think that's I think that's probably the real reason. She's been with Jerry all this time. Because, like, now that we're looking at it from this lens of... Because mm -hmm. we've seen that in, in the alternate universe where Beth and Jerry weren't together, mm -hmm. they both become way more successful, but they also go insane and go down like a crazy r rabbit hole of depravity and yep. end up together yep. anyways. Um, in this episode, like, we get the sense that if Beth had never had Jerry around... Would she ever have gotten anyone? Like, is the only reason she ever got someone to be around her because he was so weak-willed that he could put up with the fact that she's an insane person, hmm. you know? Hmm. Like, right. here's this woman who's, a, who's like, a psycho bitch, and who would possibly want to be with her other than the weakest man in the world? And, like... There's a reason they were together for so long, you know, like she's afraid to have to be by herself because we see now what happens if she doesn't have Jerry. She ain't exactly getting out there in the dating pool and making yeah. new friends like <laughs> mm -hmm. she's just being a fucking insane person in her house building <laughs> statues out of hooves horse hoops and shit. And shit. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And of course, there's just the practical fact that, you know, she got knocked up and then had some kids right. and, you know, that's going to fucking weigh you down. Yeah, that too. Um, I was just before we recorded this, I was watching a video by mm -hmm. a guy called uh, the Matching Ties Network um, called Harmon and Jerry and Rick. And he was basically creating the idea that Dan Harmon like writes a ton of himself into Rick and Jerry. Sure. Um, <laughs> and apparently in between seasons two and three of Rick and Morty, 
Um, he married his longtime girlfriend and got divorced in the span of about three months. Oh, my God. <laughs> and up, up until the start of season three, the way Beth and Jerry's marriage was always portrayed was that they weren't just staying together for the kids. Mm-hmm. They were – there was other reasons. There was, like, this deeper connection between them. There was some destiny them. shit going on a little bit. Yeah. A little bit. Mm-hmm. But then you start season three and they immediately get divorced. Yeah. <laughs> and so I have to wonder if this is also Dan Harmon exploring uh. his own divorce in this season um what an excellent like, point and i think it probably yeah. is yeah and it's it's interesting to, th- to see that sort of change in mindset that like you know i mean maybe by the end of the season we'll find out that they do need to get back together who knows mm-hmm. uh, maybe they'll just keep exploring being separate for seasons on end and we'll we'll just have this broken home that we're following which honestly is kind of a great idea. Like, how many sitcoms have we seen about a function, like a well, a dysfunctional but still together family? What if we just have a show about like a family that's broken up and and everyone's slowly getting jaded to crazy space adventures? And like, we're yeah, at a point yeah. now where Jerry is dating an alien of his own accord. You okay, know? Was it just me, or was that a pre? I mean, I know that the Earth had been enslaved by aliens, but to just like. They're basically all gone, and it's just human society again. And we, we're pretty much yeah. we're pretty much ignoring that. But there's just an alien, and like nobody gives a fuck. It's just this is just common now. This is this yeah. is the life everyone's involved with. Um, Did they go mm-hmm. when they ate with the alien? Was that the same diner that uh, <laughs> that we went to? Not only in the last episode when Rick had to kill the the alien that <laughs> wanted to die, but also uh. the start of the season. When they were just in a family diner, is it the same no, diner? No, 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 no. That was a different one. That that was okay. Cha- Chani's, Chauncey's. That was definitely a different one. Uh, this place was, okay. what do they say, Mexican something? No, th- this is like a Japanese place. No, okay, that was different because okay. that place was like it was like a taco right, place. There was sushi here. Yeah, that's, that's right. right. You should know that you're the biggest. It's a lot of restaurants in the in Rick and Morty. Now that I think about it, it's true. Um, and you hate restaurant scenes. God damn it! This is the worst. Zero out of ten. Exposition, yes. Uh, but, no, it's great. I, Jerry's subplot with the alien chick was fucking hilarious. Like, it was pretty good. It's just such a Jerry... It's a, the, Well, what made it work for me was the fact that Jerry has telekinetic powers as a result of this. Mm-hmm. Which is fucking, like... Th- that moment when they walk into his house and he just, like, not only is everything nice, but he has telekinetic powers. I was just like, whoa, hold I, on. I <laughs> love that. I loved how they rolled with it. But I must admit, I was, I thought there would be, like, the other shoe would drop on that on that somewhere in the episode and just was never mentioned again. Never came up yeah. again. Uh, but, I, I don't know, it wasn't that big a deal. But I just, I did expect something. Whatever, yeah. who cares. That was why great. He, that why didn't he use great. it to help on the hunt? Why didn't he fight with psychic powers? Maybe he wasn't hunt? getting enough puss. You know, he didn't have enough juice left. Wasn't yeah. getting enough. They were hunting too much. They after they feast, they hunt, and then they hunt to celebrate the hunt. And this episode had so many fucking zingers in it, man. Yeah. Like yeah, I, I don't even know where to begin, but <laughs> I there's a few that I can remember. Like I I would I'd have to watch the episode again and like write them all down to get all the great ones. Mm-hmm. But two of my favorites. Um, at the beginning of the episode, when Beth says, like, something about the generation gap, and sh- Summer's like, our generation gets, um... We ah, get, we... Fu- it's traumatized uh, for traumatized breakfast. Traumatized for breakfast, yeah, that's the yeah. one. That was great. Which that was, was a dope <laughs> Summer line. <laughs> yeah. Which is totally <laughs> accurate. <laughs> yeah, uh, And then... Uh, later on when they're chastising Jerry about how they say, like, they're like, we chose mom. We made that very clear to you both, uh, like at the breakup and in your weird Facebook post, the mm-hmm. comments of your, of your long Facebook post or whatever. <laughs> like, that was great. That was, Cause it creates yeah. like, you can imagine a whole other scene that's left out of the show <laughs> of like them going on Facebook and seeing Jerry having typed this wall of text <laughs> about the breakup that no one cares about and them leaving like angry response. This kind of shit happens in my family. Of course. You know, of course. Like someone gets upset and goes on a fucking Facebook tirade and everyone else blasts them in the comments of it. Like I've been through that particular drama. Mm-hmm. So it was, ah, it's too perfect. I Lines like one, that, man. I know what you mean. I, for one, really, the thing that was the funniest to me in this episode was just 
how gross everyone was willing to be all the time. So first of all, there was just like the Jerry scene where he's just like, like he, he wants them to know real explicitly like how much yeah. he's fucking this bitch. Is that relatable to <laughs> yeah. Digi? Just, you gotta let everybody know how much you're fucking, you know, is that, you get anything yeah. from that? Okay, anyway, <laughs> anyway, uh, but uh, later on, the the running joke of the dude in in Fruity Land just insisting upon explaining to everyone in extreme detail and displaying oh, yeah. for them <laughs> the fucking ritual of him like impregnating these fucking monsters and devouring right. the bodies his insistence upon explaining this to everyone every fucking yeah. time I, I laugh my ass off that was the what, funniest what thing made this episode that work for me so much is that like because they very <laughs> Rick and Rick and Beth do that thing where they rapidly like extrapolate that that's what's going on here. Yeah, like, right, right. They immediately figure that out. Oh, and yeah, of course. while I thought that line was funny because of, like, just what they're saying, mm -hmm. I was a little bit annoyed by the overly, like, meta... <laughs> like, when this show does that thing where everyone's just too far ahead of the story, and yep, I'm like, okay... Yep. They don't have to all be like maximum nihilism twenty four seven, but then for it to then be like explained over and over again made it way funnier. Oh, it's <laughs> fucking it great! Time. It was fucking great. Like they have and a he fucking... does it. He fucks it right in front of them. It has a baby and he eats it in even, front of them. Even Rick is like, dude, please stop. No one like this is too yeah. much. I don't want to think about this happening. Oh, it was great. God, I fucking. I love that he just it. books right after that he's like all right i'm done like that was <laughs> yeah that was fantastic gross. that was fantastic <laughs> oh man uh it, it was it was great that uh rick you know again like he he's a god he just like yeah okay i don't want to be here anymore so i'm leaving and then he does and then beth yeah. has to go and you know bumble fuck around and try to deal with the situation on her own yeah it was great man it was great um should we talk more about the fruity land plots the whole uh the things that went on there yeah it's a it's an interesting I love the. I guess it all really culminates in the moment where Beth realizes that she is her father. Yep. Because mm -hmm. she, just as Rick will not take responsibility for the fact that he made Beth this person, she will not take responsibility for the fact that she made uh, Tommy this person. True. Um, by pushing him into the honey, and all all he wants is an apology, and she would rather murder everyone than give that apology. <laughs> and uh, yeah, and then she like realizes. She kind of has an awakening moment of, like, I need to stop lying to myself and admit I'm a fucking monster, yeah. just like Rick. You Especially know? that coming right after the scene where she's like, no, I'm going to go prove that I'm not a bad person, that I am a good person. Yeah. And it's like, you just found out, objectively not a good person. You're kind of a fucking yeah. monster. It's great. It's great. And, I mean, they, they still rescue the dad because they're like, you know, <laughs> we can do some good here. But Like, does the world really want Tommy back in it at this point, no. considering what he is? No. No. No, they should have just left him there. Like, fuck it. Th then again, would it be? They like, did just leave him there. They they cloned him. I think she murdered him. Also, I mean, he, the guy's got to be no, dead, yeah, right? Yeah. That was implied. Yeah, no, I, right, I assume okay. she killed the real Tommy and mm -hmm, they cloned mm -hmm. him into a new one. Of course, of course. Yeah, that's fine. That plot line's resolved. It's all good. It's all good. Yeah. I also liked the. Um, this was a very subtle detail that I thought was really cool about Fruity Land. So, like, at one point, Rick's, like, talking about, like, how, you know, how hard he worked to making, how hard he worked to, like, make Fruity Land and stuff. And, like, you know, they use the magic chalk, like, chalk zone to, like, you know, draw a thing and then walk in yeah. and make magic doorways and shit. I thought it was really cool that, um... This is just one of those subtle details. Like, at one point, he's just like, yeah, I collapsed a whole quasar to fucking... And, and Beth just cuts him off like, Dad, I don't give a fuck about how you made it. Like, just take me there. I don't give a fuck. And he's just like, oh, fucking bitch. Uh, and then, like, later on in the episode, he's like, okay, uh, you know, we left. That guy's dead. Time to, like, pull the plug. And then he, like, he makes a gesture as if he's going to, like, snap the little piece of chalk thing that he's got. But then Beth stops him. Yeah. And I'm just like, hey, that's cool. Like... So that's so right. basically we're learning that it's a pocket dimension maybe contained within that thing or that's like some power source to it or something. Right. I don't know. I just thought that was a cool little detail. I liked it. Always in with the details in this show, man. Yep. Lots of great lots of great stuff. I love all the inventions that he gave Beth and how long they let that scene go on. Yeah, yeah. Like he just lists this shit for so long and it was like each thing's funnier than the last. It's one know? of those it's one of those Andy Kaufman jokes where they just keep going and the joke is that it just keeps going and you need to get yeah. comfortable with the fact that this is not stopping but, anytime soon. And I think it I think it worked really well because I felt like it kept giving slightly different angles on it. Like yeah, it yeah. wasn't just Beth is a psycho. It's like each item you can imagine its particular 
use. Mm-hmm. This was a great way to like in inst- like in my mind, I'm crafting a flashback that right. is not actually being shown, you know. Mm-hmm. And there's the stage play flashback, which is also fucking hilarious. That they're just like yeah. literally describing what happened, like in <laughs> no uncertain terms. <laughs> and Rick's yep. just criticizing the screenwriting. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that was great. Oh, that was great. I also really liked when um, uh, Beth just walks back in, uh, you know, after covered in blood, after killing everybody there, and she walks in on Rick, yeah. you know, tune his guitar, do, 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 and then later on, yeah. he's like, they, they do a musical montage to the do, do in my butt. Oh, my God, the musical mo- That was the moment where the episode <laughs> was like, this is now one of my favorite of the show, uh-huh. because <laughs> we just have, like, we have this really emotional dialogue, <laughs> and then the emotional montage is immediately do, do in my butthole, and I was like... <laughs> Done. Ten out of every, ten. Every daughter's you, you got a, a butthole in her dad's butt at one yeah. point in his life. Yeah, it was um, it's good shit, man. <laughs> it's good shit. It's just that's the kind of humor fucking... I can really resonate with. Yeah, that's that's my kind of humor, right? There. That's what I come to Rick and Morty for. Mm-hmm. Everyone's always like, anyone who criticizes this show and they're like, <laughs> oh, it's just a guy burping and talking about nihilism. No, what makes <laughs> Rick and Morty funny is the doo doo in my butt song. <laughs> That is Agreed. The, that is, like, the fact that they put that as the cherry on top of the inner depth, you know? <laughs> that we get this, right, this beautiful episode with all this story, like, fucking deep shit about the relationship of these characters, and the big climactic sign-off of it is the doo-doo in my butthole song. <laughs> That's why I love this show. Yeah. Yeah, man. Um, so, so let's, which I I barely heard the lyrics of because I was laughing over it the entire time. I I went back and listened to it again. Yeah, it was fucking great. (laughs) So, so let's talk about the ending. So it's after that scene that, you know, Beth's uh, come to a realization that she's a fucking monster and Rick's just like, uh, she's like, what should I do, dad? You know, got no more excuses to to hang around here. There's nothing holding me here. What the fuck do I do? And Rick's like, fucking peace out, dog. Peace out. I will yeah. make you a clone. It will do everything that you did in your life. You've got no attachments. You can be completely free. No moral ramifications of any kind. What are you going to do? And then they don't answer it, but it's obvious. It's obvious that she's I, gone. That's okay. Uh-huh. That was, yeah. It Let's was a it. weird scene mm-hmm. that they didn't show that. Because, like, it definitely feels super stilted. When mm-hmm. she comes back into the room, she's acting like a clone. Yep. Like she's yep. acting she's acting a lot like the the Summer and Morty bots from episode two. Exactly. Um so I was thinking, okay, it's a clone, we're about to get the reveal, but then there is no reveal. And I don't know if that's just to trick us for now. Mm-hmm. Like or just to leave the question unanswered. Like we won't really know unless we see Beth off somewhere else later. You know, I think that that is a almost guaranteed to happen. I, I, I just uh, okay, just like narratively, as as the narrative genius that I am, I don't see how they could get away with putting that in this episode and then not having a payoff like at some point in the future. I expect I mean, it to be at the end of the episode and like the after yeah, credits thing. That's the thing. But they like, didn't. If that's what they did, mm-hmm. this. I don't think there's ever been a time in this show where they set up something like that that didn't pay off within the episode. You know, I guess you could so argue like, the evil Morty thing, but like that was a that was like a setup for something right. later. So yeah, we all knew that. That was like that was like an ending like clincher thing though, and like we never yeah. knew like what this like what was gonna be the relevance of that until much later. Mm-hmm. This one, it just feels like like the way that they ended the episode is clearly meant to suggest, hey, she didn't clone herself, but then you have that or did she in your mind, mm-hmm. and like. I don't know. Maybe it pays off next episode. If it doesn't pay off by the end of the season, I'm mm-hmm. going to get real skeptical. But yeah, if they yeah. suddenly in season like four brought in this other Beth, it would be a fucking pretty big sledgehammer to the face. I will say that, you know, <laughs> I think it my, would be like, oh, you motherfuckers, you held off for that long. You know, my, my genre savviness just to me, it almost gives me no way to believe that they are that she didn't leave knowing the show. And knowing how these characters operate, I, I cannot imagine a world in which they wrote it that that summer or that that Beth indeed stayed. And maybe that's how they're gonna fuck guys like me over who think that we know yeah. everything about the show. Maybe it'll happen because you uh, this show. I mean, there's no way that they just go with the obvious thing on its on its face. Like there's there's that kind of show, and then there's a a a, a, a more complex show that would do something on top of it, and then there's like. 
double, triple layers on top of that where they could interweave plots and double back on your expectations and totally surprise you out of nowhere. And Rick and Morty sometimes transcends to that level. And the biggest way they could defy all expectations is to indeed have Beth not leave after setting up that whole scene. So we're just yeah. going to have to find out. I guess we've got nothing we can do. Yeah. We'll see. And we won't we will not be able to say one hundred percent sure until the show is over. That's that's true. Even then like there's even then. Yeah. Even then it's up for debate. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh well, I guess that's all I have to say about this episode. The ending gag was hilarious. It was. Um it the was. fact that Rick, <laughs> the fact that Rick went and fucked Jerry's. Oh, that was the best part of it. That was the best part. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, uh, and uh, yeah, the meta about like nobody uses answering machines before. You can keep it, whatever. Uh, got yeah. a chuckle out of me. But I did have one final point I wanted to make about this episode, and it was just right. that. So you were quite positive about all this Beth development happening. Um, yeah. I, for one, a as a portion of that, okay, I felt a little bit deflated by the this happening and it's just because okay so in this episode we have beth finally realizing things all these things about rick and and herself to be fair that we didn't know but everything about rick we have all known since episode one there is nothing right. new on like the realization of this whole rick situation so to me it's a little bit of a mixed bag only because this is something that had to happen inevitably in order to make this character at all interesting. But because it took so long and it's, it's, she's, it's been so much dead weight, basically, having this character along, doing nothing for so long. Like, it's happening now. It's like, okay, great. But it's, it's, it's just like, okay, finally, finally it's out of the way. It's, it's like a bowel movement, you know? It's finally gone. <laughs> it's out of the way. But, man, that shit stinks. Uh, and, but I'm glad it's beyond us. I don't know. I don't want to shit at it too much. It's just... Uh, I, I, I wish this had happened sometime sooner. Or that Beth had just been more interesting leading up to this point in some way. Yeah. But she really I, hadn't I, been. I, honestly, I think if you went back, she was most interesting in season one. Mm -hmm. um, and definitely least interesting in season three. So, like, I think the problem has really been with this season not finding anything to do with her mm -hmm. because it was mm -hmm. so much more interested in exploring Jerry's side of the breakup up until this point and yeah. how the kids yeah. were dealing with it and just exploring Rick's being Rick, you know, <laughs> mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. or doing weird stuff. I kind of feel like why wasn't this episode just earlier in the season in a way, but yeah. maybe it would have felt like too many like relationship episodes in a row. I don't know, but like it mm -hmm. definitely feels like, Maybe it would be like maybe Beth's character won't be as bad going back through the season now that we know this about her. Yeah, like you can kind of put together a little bit more why like she's acting this way because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I think I think they probably had this in mind from the start of season three. Like the I way totally she's agree. been acting this season mm -hmm. is clearly indicative of this character they're painting in this episode. I don't know how true I would say that is of the other seasons. Um, I yeah, I'm with you on that. But like it, it'd be worth. It would be worth going back for a look. But, like, yeah, I I see where you're coming from. I do think it's unfortunate that it's taken this long for Beth to have a moment where, like, oh, man, she might be cool now. Or I'm a lot more invested in her than mm -hmm. I was before, you know. I certainly feel that having this episode end. But uh, additionally, I do want to say there's a lot of hype here for Beth going out and, like, becoming her own woman and, and you know, doing yeah. stuff. But, like... Beth's not that smart. I feel like there's a little bit of an exaggerated sense of, like, how cool things are going to be with Beth now that she's out there. I feel like she's just going to go, like, she's she's no Rick. She is no Rick, yeah. you know. She's not, like, a god genius or anything. In the other alternate world, she just became, like, a fucking famous horse surgeon, you know? Uh, yeah. What's been holding her Although, back there? I don't know. It, it has, It. I mean, Rick has implied that she could have been a super genius, but... I don't know. I don't know what she's going to do. Yeah. Like, I mean, we've already seen Morty and Summer just by proximity to Rick gaining a lot of his, like, abilities. You know, like, they, yeah, they wouldn't survive true. very long by themselves, but they do have a lot more skills than a normal person would. You're you not know? wrong about that. You're not wrong about that. Yeah. So, okay, you know what? Yeah. I'll, I'll withhold judgment on that. Maybe they, they could do something interesting with her. So, yeah. yeah. Go to it, writers. Make her interesting. And I'll tell you the first thing they got to do is is not have her stayed here. She needs to have left. She needs to have left. Go be an adventurer. Yeah. Go do something cool. Uh, that's what I hope is revealed. And I think it will be this season. That's all I got. 
Alrighty, that's uh fuck uh fuck a <laughs> fuck fuck wubba dub dub I don't give a fuck bitch. Bye everybody.